We give praise, esteem, and honor to the Most High Yah by way of Yahusha Hamashiach this day. And John 5 and 39 is right on time. I hope it stay for free. But who knows? We ain't even got no picture no more. Just gangster with it. That's all we got. Search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life and there they which testify me. And you will not come to me that you might have life. I receive not honor from men, but I know you that you have not the, lo not the love of Allah he made you. I come in my Abba's name and you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him will you receive. How can you believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that come from Allah only? Do not think that I will accuse you to Abba. There is one that accuse you, even Moses, in whom you trust. For had you believed Moses... You would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if you believe not his writings, how shall you believe my words? Exodus chapter 28 and verse 29. This is a matter and topic that we have never touched. But we shall do so today as we continue our journey through the law. And with it, we will study and look upon the whole matter as it pertains to this garment. But actually, actually, we're going to start at verse 15. And some of the things that we're going to read, we're going to, uh, it's going to be a setup. And we very well may have to cover this topic into next week, you will willing so. Thou shalt make the breastplate of judgment with cunning work after the work of the ephod. Thou shalt make it of gold, of blue, and of purple, and of scarlet, and of fine twine linen shalt thou make it. I want you to keep in mind that when it says blue here, that really that color is more like a violet. It's more of a purplish color. When it states purple, it says it's a reddish purple. So it's not blue in the traditional sense of what we see blue to be. Keep that in mind for future reference. Four scores shall begin shall shall it be being doubled. A span shall be the length thereof, and a span shall be the breadth thereof. And thou shalt set in its settings of stones, even four rows of stones. The first row shall be a sargis, a topaz, and a carbuncle. This shall be the first row. The second row shall be an emerald and a sapphire and a diamond. And the third row a ligger an agate and an amethyst and the fourth row a barrel an onyx and a jasper and they shall be set in gold in their enclosings and the stone shall be made with the names of the twelve children of Yasharal, twelve according to their names like the engravings of a signet every one with his name shall they be according to the twelve tribes and that shall make upon the breastplate chains at the ends of the wreathen works of pure gold and thou shalt make upon the breastplate two rings of gold, and thou shalt put two rings on the two ends of the breastplate. And thou shalt put the two wreathen chains of gold in the two rings which are on the ends of the breastplate. And on the other ends of the two wreathen chains thou shalt fasten in the two ushes and put them on the shoulder pieces of the ephod before it. And thou shalt make two rings of gold, and thou shalt make them upon the two ends of the breastplate in the border thereof, which is in the side of the ephod inward. And two other rings of gold thou shalt make and shalt put them on the two sides of the ephod underneath towards the forepart thereof over against the other coupling thereof above the curious girdle of the ephod. Thou shalt bind the breastplate by the rings thereof unto the rings of the ephod with the lace of blue that it may be above the curious, curious girdle of the ephod that the breastplate be not loosed from the ephod. The ephod is a priestly garment. Are you aware of that Kira? Did you know that? I'll take your silence as you knew that. Yeah. We're going to be talking about pretty much everything that pertains to this garment. But for those who don't know, that ephod is a priestly garment. It's a shoulder cape outer garment. But the one by the high priest is more costly and it's woven. And it has those shoulder pieces and it has that breast piece. So the high priest ephod is different. <laughs> than the ephod of the regular priest. 
And Aaron shall bear the names of the children of Yasharal in the breastplate of judgment upon his heart when he go into the Kadesh place for a memorial before Yahuwah. So the reason why we looked at all that is we looked at is he has to bear the breastplate upon his heart. So he carries these 12 tribes upon his heart. The, the word for breastplate or breast peace, peace is Koshin. It's Koshin. What, what's his major malfunction? Hello? Yeah. Oh, that's you? That was you, Carol? Yeah. I thought yeah, that. Oh, so, uh, the words that we have for, for Koshin, the characters we have is the Kot, the Sean, and the Noon. That's what we have here. The Kot, the Sean, and the Noon. So we're not going to look at to use divide or fence. We would use protect here or a wall or a defense because he said that that's what his breastplate is for. When we turn around and we look at Deshaun, we know that we will sit back and we would look at a pair or two. We wouldn't say eat, press, or sharp, or devour, or cut, or any of that. And then we have the noon. And then we would have to sit back and look at, we could say offspring or life continuing. So when we look at it is, is that matter of fact, we're gonna use offspring. It'd be better for us to use offspring because the breastplate is containing the 12 tribes and their names. And it says that he bears the breastplate of judgment upon his heart when he go into the Kadesh place for a memorial before Yahuwah continually. So if we remember the word for memorial, okay, that's not the same word we use for memorial. We have Zikron for memorial, which is a reminder or a remembrance. So. Oh, you are right, cause I mean, shoot, the children over, over the muffin them how I do it too. Uh, so when we turn around and we look at this breastplate, and we're looking at to protect the joined offspring. So let's go to John chapter ten. Let's go to John chapter ten, and then after that, Hebrews chapter seven, cause he's bearing this continually. It's his job to protect his offspring. After we read John chapter ten. In Hebrews chapter 7, we'll go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. It's Yahusha's job to protect his offspring. John 10 and 25 is where I begin. I don't need all of that, but I just want to read it. So, yeah. Also, let you know, Kara, it's still a strong possibility that on the 31st, we'll be, I mean, I can cut the phone on, but we'll be at a location and somebody else will be preaching. No, I won't be preaching, but I'll let you know how that, okay. how that works. Yahusha answered them, I told you and you believe not. The works that I do in my Abba's name, they bear witness of me. But you believe not because you're not of my sheep as I said unto you. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. They can't pluck them out of his hand because he protects those that belong to him. You know, the law tells you that repeatedly. Yahuwah defends all those who belong to him. Before we look at Hebrews 7, matter of fact, let's put Hebrews 7 on the back burner, burner for a moment. Now let's go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. You know, Yahushua told you to be of good cheer because in the world you'll have tribulation. This is 2 Thessalonians 1 and 3. But in him you'll have shalom. He said, I didn't pray that you should be take, taken out of the world. I pray that you should protect them from evil is what he said. We are bound to thank Elohim always for you, brethren, as it is meet because that your faith grow exceedingly and the charity of every one of you all towards each other abound. 
so that we ourselves esteem in you and the synagogues of Elohim for your patience and faith of all your persecutions and tribulations that ye endure. Which is the manifest, manifest token of the righteous judgment of Elohim that you be counted worthy of the kingdom of Elohim for which no. you suffer. Seeing it then a righteous thing with Elohim to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you, and to you who are troubled, rest with us when the master Yahusha shall be revealed from Shamahim with his mighty Malachim, and flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not Elohim, and they that obey not the Besor of our master Yahusha HaMashiach, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the master and from the esteem of his power. And when he shall come to be esteemed in his Kassid and be admired in all them that believe, because our testimony among you was believed in that day. Wherefore also we pray always for you that Elohim could count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power. So when we look at this here, this breastplate of judgment, right? And remember, this breastplate of judgment is pertaining to what? Before we even get to the Urim and the Thummim. This breastplate of judgment is dealing with the surrounding or the protection, the surrounding or the protection of the pair that is uh, of his offspring so when we sit back and we look at it if you're paired we're joined to yahusha and yahuwah therefore when you it tells you in, in proverbs i think 18 and 10 or 18 and 12 that the name of yahuwah is a strong tower and those that run into it are safe so and remember as we read in each row on that breastplate is a, a, a representation of the tribes and he wears this as a remor remember let's look at son let's look at son now we come over to Hebrews and the why is this important when we deal because we just talked about judgment and it's mishpat for judgment so it's to destroy the commands of sin You know, it's a lot of brothers who make that breastplate as a chain. And understandably so, because it's fly, it's fresh. You know, you got gemstones. You know, diamonds are cool, but I ain't going to tell you no lie. Gemstones are better. I always felt that way. This is my personal opinion. Gemstones are better. You know, because you can get a look. And whether people know it or not, gemstones are pretty pricey if you get the real deal. Mm, excuse me. Let's look at... Uh, I want to start with this. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 7, I suppose. We'll begin at verse 1. For this Melchizedek, Malik of Salem, priest of the Most High Elohim, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and baruched him, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being by interpretation Malik of righteousness, and after that Malik of Shalom, which is Malik of Shalom, without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made light unto the son of Elohim, abide a priest continually. Now consider how great this man was, unto whom even the patriarch Abraham gave the tenth of the spoils. Now we're going to drop down because we're just dealing with this Levitical priesthood, setting it up what it is. This is the high priesthood. We want to drop ourselves down about verse... Uh, Verse 11. Because, matter of fact, I'm going to hit a point that I think I didn't mention to y'all when I talked to y'all about this. But I'm going to do it tonight, though. I have to send it to Deidre. If therefore perfection were made were by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the Torah, what further need was there that another priest should rise after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron? For the priesthood being changed, there is made a necessity a change also of Torah. For he of whom these things were spoken pertain to another tribe of which no man gave attendance at the altar for it is evident that our master sprang out of Yehuda, of which tribe moses spake nothing concerning priesthood and yet it is far more evident for after the similitude of melchizedek there arise another priest who is made not after the torah of carnal commandment but after the power of endless life for he testified that thou art a priest forever after the order of melchizedek so only the high priest can put on this breastplate. I mean, everyone who was after the order of the high priest, 
placed on this breastplate. If you were not of the son of Aaron, you could not put on this breastplate. Now we turn around and we see Yahusha is made after the order of Melchizedek. Why is this important? Well, one, we looked at how he said that he would protect and that how he would surround his children. We know in Matthew chapter 24, it tells us about uh, that how he would come and deliver his people from the four winds or from the four corners of the earth. And that he protects his people. So he doesn't deliver you from the trip, keep you from tribulation, but to keep you from the evil. So when you look at this here, when that breastplate, that koshan, it is to protect. It is to protect the pair of the offspring. No. To keep you joined to the offspring. That's what his ability is, to protect the offspring. To protect those who are joined to Allahim. So nevertheless, but we want to look at something as it pertains to this breastplate. We might even not even talk about Urim and Thummim. Just this breastplate this evening. When we talk about this breastplate, we have to look at something. I want to thank, I want to say Leviticus 16, and what it is. This is what I ain't hit y'all with. And it was in my head too. Let me make sure. <laughs> there it is. Pray the Lamb. Leviticus chapter 16, right? We'll pick it up at verse 19. Now, I'm going to ask you a question, Kira and Shayla. When it comes to the high priest garments, can he wear them outside of the Kadesh of the Kadesh? So keep that in mind. Could he walk around in public with that breastplate on? Can't walk in public with that breastplate on. So remember, right? The breastplate is for him to when he walk in the inner tabernacle for what? For him, to, for him to remember us upon his heart. Mm -hmm. So remember, it says upon his heart, it's upon his lab or the teaching to get into the house. Mm -hmm. So he's going to remember all those that he taught to enter into him. He that's why he say nobody can't pluck them out of my hand. Then that take us back to. The inscribing upon your hands, I'm not going to forget you. Which also takes us to, which we dealt with this in the past. And you look at Isaiah 49, he said you inscribed on the palms of my hands, right? You know, on the shoulder pieces of the breastplate are the names of the children of Yasharal as well. You aware of that? Let's double back and look at that. Come on back to Exodus 28, Carol. Let's double back and look at that. Because I believe we just read that. I had to make sure. No, I was not. I misspoke. My apologies. Come back to Leviticus 16. Also remember this here when it says he'll bear the names of the children of Yasharal, which is Nassau. Do you remember what characters that we use for Nassau, uh, Shayla? No, what? Nassau. N-A-S-A. N -A -S -A. To lift up. Noon. Oh, noon. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. No, we got three. You got the noon. The Olive -A -S -H? N A S A S A. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Now you ain't gonna have no shine in here because there's no H. There's no sh sound. It's it's NASA, like NASA. It's just like NASA. You know what I'm saying? So you spell N A S A. So you know you got the noon. So what you gonna have in the middle? So we know we got to have the olive for that a sound in the middle. But then when we have, oh. what's that? I thought you said N A S A. Yeah. So it's noon and olive. I believe so. And, and then you have the sa at the end. So that's Samak. That would be Samak. So remember, if he's got, when you look at the lift up the carry, and he has these 12, he has the children of Yasharal upon his heart, that know that takes us back to him bearing that stake on his shoulder or bearing our sins in his body. Because what was that to do? That was to protect his offspring. Let's look at that real quick. First Peter chapter, chapter 2. Oh, little baby. 
For a Peter Tyler too. Uh, we'll make it 21 for even here in two where you call because Mashiach also suffered for us leaving us an example that you should follow his steps who did no sin neither was God found in his mouth who when he was reviled reviled not again and when he suffered he threatened not but committed himself to him who judged righteously who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness by whose stripes we're healed. So remember, he bare that in his own body. He bare that in his own body for the purpose of bearing that upon his heart. We have to realize that that breastplate of righteousness, he bared us upon his heart. So back to Leviticus 16. And I think we in verse 19, or verse 20, actually. And when he had made an end of reconciling the Kadesh place and the tabernacle of the congregation and the altar, he shall bring the live goat. Aaron shall lay both his hands upon the head of the live goat and confess over him all the iniquities of the children of Yasharal and all their transgressions and all their sins, putting them upon the head of the goat and shall send them away by the hand of a fit man into the wilderness. And the goat shall bear upon him all their iniquities unto a land not inhabited, and he shall let go the goat in the wilderness. And Aaron shall come into the tabernacle of the congregation, and he shall put off the linen garments which he put on when he went into the Kadesh place, and he shall leave them there. And he shall wash his flesh with water in the Kadesh place, and put on his garments, and come forth and offer his burnt offering, and the burnt offering of the people, and make atonement for himself and for the people. So upon making atonement, he has to put off, because we just read how that garment's got fine linen in it. And he has to put that off and come out of the tabernacle. He can't come into, he can't, he can't walk around with this particular garment on. So what's the next page? The reason why I'm, I'm sitting back looking at that is the reason why I'm looking at that and I'm trying to, to put it together in my brain. Hebrews chapter 7 verse 20. Cause I really want to space it and I don't really want to put a bunch of stuff together. I just want to do the breastplate now, the Urim and Thummim Friday, and then y'all willing the other ancillary parts of that outfit. And then that way I'm not jamming stuff, stacking stuff on top of each other. Hebrews 7 and uh, 20. And inasmuch as not without an oath, he was made priest. For those priests were made without an oath. But this with an oath by him that said unto him, You who are swearing will not repent, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. By so much was Yahushua made surety of a better testament. And they truly were many priests because they were not suffered to continue by reason of death. But this man continue because continue ever have an unchangeable priesthood, wherefore he is able to save them to the uttermost that come unto Allahim by him, seeing he ever lived to make intercession for them. For such a high priest become us who was Kadesh, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than Shamahim, who need not daily, as those high priests, to offer up sacrifice first for his own sins and then for, his, for the people's. For this he did once when he offered up himself. For Torah make men high priests which have infirmity, but the word of the oath which was since Torah make the son who was consecrated forevermore. So why is that important? When we read in Leviticus 16, we notice how we read about the scapegoat that put the sins on the people. And then, then Aaron has to take off the high priest's garment, put on his clothes, and then make an offering for himself. Mm -hmm. So how do we reconcile this to Mashiach? If we look at this to Mashiach, we know he's the scapegoat. So we're not going to spend a whole bunch of time on that. We'll deal with that another day. But we're, gonna, we're dealing with the fact of him putting off his high priest's garments to come and make an offering. And then he has to go back into the Kadesh place and put this on again. So let's look at that. John chapter 3. And this is going to point to something that we're going to look at with the Urim and Thummim. And then it's also pointing to something that we also realize the need that we have to put off garments. And then put Kadesh garments on. And of course this will be made a lot more crystal clear. 
y'all willing that when the week concludes. But it's not going to be crystal clear, clear right now. I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and say that. It's not going to be at all. John 3 and what? 12? He's a little destructive, little boy. Little boy. Make that 3 and 10. Of course, you know, he's talking about being born again to Nicodemus. That's what's going on here. Yahusha answered and said unto him, Are thou a master of Yasharal and know not these things? Let me ask you a question. If he said, asked him, was he a master, then what was Nicodemus? What's the Hebrew word? What would be the word that also means master that he told you don't call no one? Are y'all the... Huh? No, no. He didn't tell nobody not to call nobody master. He told you in Matthew chapter 24 to call no man a particular title. No, that's what she just said. Let's look at it. Matthew chapter 24. Yeah, you better be quiet, little boy. We're going to get your butt. going to get your butt. Yeah, I know it. Where's the verse at? My bad, that's Matthew ch chapter 23. Not 24. That's my mistake. Matthew chapter 23. And that's about verse, uh, verse 6. Well, make it verse 4. For they bind heavy burdens grievous to be born, and they lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. Remember, who is he talking about here in Matthew chapter 23? He's talking about the scribes and the Pharisees, correct? Now remember, the breastplate of judgment, the high priest had to wear them to bear what? The names of the children of Yasharal, to lift them up or to exalt them or to exalt them in prayer or supplication to the Most High that their sins could be forgiven. This man just stated how these men lay burdens on other men's shoulders when that breastplate of judgment was supposed to be a responsibility laid on their shoulders and they would not move these responsibilities. But all their works will they do to be seen of men. They make broad their phalanteries and enlarge the borders of their garments. And they love the upper roast rooms at the feasts and the chief seats in the synagogues and greetings in the markets to be called of men, Rabbi, Rabbi. But be ye not called Rabbi, for one is your master, even Mashiach, and all ye are brethren. And call no man your Abba upon the earth, for one is your Abba which is in Shamahim. Neither be called ye masters, for one is your master, even Mashiach. But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. See, that line is what people use mistakenly. When he says, we're all brethren. See, dudes take that and they say that and say, see, nobody can be over authority over another person because we all brothers. That's not what he said. When you see what he said, he told you don't call another man your what? Your master. That's what he told you. He said, you got one master, even Mashiach. You don't need to call each other that. And where does that come from? Because he said that we were servants in the law. Let me show you where that come from. Leviticus chapter 20. I'm going to show you where that come from. It come, it, it's, it's rooted out of the law. It's rooted out of the law. Make sure that's what I want. Leviticus 20. Or is it Leviticus 25? Come over here, Leviticus 25. That's what it is. Leviticus 25. Leviticus chapter 25. Let's look at about verse 55. Verse 53. He said, As a yearly hired servant, he shall be with him. And the other shall not rule with rigor over him in thy sight. Why is that important when he say a hired servant, right? See, that's that Luke 17 when he say, I'm just an unprofitable servant doing what it is, what my duty is to do. Because you've been hired. The same way that Peter told you in First Peter chapter 5 when he was talking to bishops to not be lords or masters over Yahuwah's heritage. 
because you're not supposed to be ruling over the people with rigor. The same thing Ezekiel 34 say. And he said, if he be not redeemed in these years, then he shall go out in the year of Jubilee, both he and his children with him. For unto me the children of Yasharal are servants. They are my servants, whom I brought forth out of the land of Misraim. I'm Yahuwah, your Elohim. So we're not supposed to call each other masters because the law tells us that we ain't supposed to have no masters because we're servants to Yahuwah. That's why he say, let the greatest among you be what? Be your servant because you're my servant. Yeah. So you don't have yeah. no business calling nobody that. Come on back to Matthew 23. Oh, we good in Matthew 23. Let's come back to John chapter 3. Stop making all that noise, little boy. <laughs> go, 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 go sit down. Go sit down, little boy. Go sit down, big head, little boy. Go sit down. Ain't nothing there for you. What I, what I told you. With your little tight pants on. I'll just get that later. So, verse 11 says, Truly, truly, I say unto thee, we speak that we do know and testify that we have seen and you receive not our witness. If I've told you earthly things and you believe not, how shall you believe if I tell you of things of Shamahim? And no man have ascended up to Shamahim, but he that came down from Shamahim, even the son of man which is in Shamahim. So why is that important based off what we talking about? Because it says that the high priest had to put off his garments, right? So he could make an offering for the sins for the people, right? Mm -hmm. So let's go to Hebrews chapter 1. We got to see that if the high, if it says the high priest mm -hmm. has to take off his priestly garment, mm -hmm. put back on his clothes, and then go make, then go make an offering for himself, Why he gotta do that twice? Like, because he can't see he got to make the cut. See he got to remember right. He's making the sins or the offerings of the people, so he has to wear the breastplate of judgment in the Kadesh Tabernacle because he's bearing the names of the children of Yasharal when he's stepping there. So when he has that breastplate of judgment with each one of those precious stones in that breastplate, he's coming to make reconciliation and memorial for the people before Yahuwah. But when he come out of that set-apart place, he has to lay those garments off, and then he has to come make that sacrifice for himself. You know what I'm saying? Because what I'm reading in Leviticus 16 is what happens on Day of Atonement, which is the day where the people's sins are reconciled. See, a lot of Israelites in these days and time, they feel like Day of Atonement is the day that you ask forgiveness for somebody who you did wrong. When that does, the book doesn't tell you to do that. That is a that is a Jewish custom. That's not a custom of the book. If you know you did somebody wrong, then you need to go handle that immediately. You don't wait till the tenth day of the seventh month to do it, and you offended him in the third day. I mean, in the third month, in the fifteenth day, you need to go take care of that. That's why, if you notice, if you got bruises on your page, you see them when atonement comes. If there's anybody offended, I sincerely apologize. That's why you see them do that because that's what Jewish people do. If you, you know what the master said, the master said, if you had uh, what, what I was telling y'all the other night, or was that last night? What was your night? When the chick was talking about Passover, and she was like, you niggas getting your fly outfits, and this, that, that, and the third. But she was like, if it's somebody offended, have you went and straightened that yet? Have you went and got, she wasn't telling no lies. You know what I'm saying? But one thing, the only thing she said that it, is that if a nigga is offended with you, and, and you ain't did nothing, I'm not coming to you about something you mad about. I ain't doing that. If I did something to you, I'll come holler at you. But if I ain't did nothing to you, what I'm coming up, come what I'm coming to reconcile with you for, you the one with the problem. I ain't got the problem. You think you should go reconcile with somebody, uh, Kira that's mad with you about something you ain't even did? I sure ain't. I ain't finna do it. People call it proud, whatever. You know what's crazy? It's people that done did some of us wrong. Nigga ain't apologized yet. Right or wrong. Nigga ain't came and said, my bad, I'm sorry, nothing. And a nigga tell you, you wrong. You know what I'm talking about? It take a, it, it, it's a real sign of strength to be able to forgive somebody who done did something to you and they ain't apologize. You know what I'm talking about? Not that you even necessarily, some people do be looking for apologies from people for stuff, and some people don't. I'm not a person who looks for one. You know what I'm saying? It's really an indictment on your character, and I'm going to move on with my life. You know what I'm talking about? Hey, little baby. 
You just gonna have to deal with that. So let's look at that, right? He said nobody, but he that ascended up from Shamahim. That no man have ascended up on high, but he that came down from on high. So come on over here to Hebrew chapter one, right? But matter of fact, let's not get Hebrews one. What was we looking at the other night? We were looking at Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's because I'm not talking about the Urim and the Thummim. So that's why. That Deuteronomy 33. That's what just clicked in my head. What we were looking at Monday? Yeah, I gotta wait. <laughs> Not because I'm like it was sudden, but I can't I can't use that right now. You gotta hold it. I have to hold it. Colossians chapter one is actually what I want. What made me think about that is because I'm coming over here to Colossians chapter one. That's what made me think about that. Uh, one in uh twelve, I suppose. Because now what that part that we looked at with those words and with that gad, yeah, we have to pull that out. You know what I'm saying? And I don't have enough time right now to pull that out. Because eventually we'll go through the whole Deuteronomy 33. But I, I, we looked at that gad just so y'all could see that that was a prophecy about something else. And then when you see the words in Hebrew, then you see that ain't even talking about... <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What are you even reading in English? It ain't even talking about that. And that and that be the part... Two Not at all. And I really, that really, go in your room with that noise. Go in your room with that noise. Go in your room. Go. So, and, and, the, and the reason being is, is that, uh, they didn't mention it right now, like, cuz. This just show you the difference of the English language that the meanings of certain words don't convert over in their language. That's why you see so many brews be going so hard about, oh, learn Hebrew, learn Hebrew. But their basis for learning Hebrew, sometimes it seems like it don't really serve no purpose. Because I don't see how they don't see Yahusha in this when they learn it. Because you don't even really have to dig deep. Like, you serious? Like, when we seen them words, and, and you're going to get it Friday, here. When you seen them words in that Deuteronomy 33, there's no way in the world you're going to tell me you couldn't catch that. Because this ain't talking about what I'm reading right here. You know what I'm saying? This is talking about two. But it is what it is. 1 and, 13 and 12. Give it thanks unto Abba, which made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the Kassid and light. Who delivered us from the power of darkness and have translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Whom we have had redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Who is the image of the invisible Elohim, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in Shamahim, that are in the rats, visible and invisible. Whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. So why did we come here? Because clearly, let's, let's, let's ask this question. Before Yahusha manifested in the flesh, was he a priest? What do you say, Kira? And what do you say? He was a priest. Why wouldn't he be a priest? Where was he when he was on high? Where was he at? Where would he have been at? In his right hand, right? So, and 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 the tabernacle on earth is a representation of what? What's in on high? So he would have had to been in that same tabernacle right along with his father, right? So you got to remember, right, everything was created by him and for him. So if the priesthood of Melchizedek, which is manifested on the earth, was created by him and for him, then what would have Yahusha been in heaven? He would have already been a high priest. Meaning, he would have, because remember, if he's telling them to make this garment, this garment's already being worn on high. How do we know this? Daniel chapter 10. The question is the vision that Daniel is seeing has Yahusha came yet? I know it's a stupid question, but I'm just asking. You. What say you, Kira? The Daniel, the vision that Daniel gets here in this tenth chapter in the fifth verse. Has Yahusha came yet? Yahusha come yet. 
And and the, Daniel ten and four. We look at Daniel ten and one. We're looking at a vision. Daniel getting a vision, right? He getting a vision of Yahusha right here. Vision, uh, yeah. Yahusha hadn't came yet, had he? And his vision. And his vision, his vision couldn't have came because it's a prophecy later on down the line. But we finna see what he got on though. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, this thing was revealed unto Daniel, whose name was Belshazzar, and this thing was true. But the time appointed was long, and he understood the thing and had an understanding of the vision. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three, four weeks. I ate no pleasant bread, neither came flesh nor wine in my mouth, neither did I anoint myself at all, till three whole weeks were fulfilled. And in the four and twentieth day of the first month, I was by the side of the great river, which is Hadekel. Then I lift up my eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose loins were girded with a fine girdle of euphaz. So remember how we read how he had this curious girl along in Exodus 28? Mm -hmm. And it said he had fine linen on. Again, of course, this is going to be more relevant, y'all willing, Shabbat day. Because that priestly garment has a fine linen in it. It's got a curious girl in it. It's got all of that. And his body was like, the, was like the barrel, and his face is the appearance of lightning, and his eyes lamps of fire, and his arms and his feet in, in color to polish brass, and the voice of his words like the voice of a multitude. And I, Daniel, alone saw the vision, for the men that were with me saw not the vision, but great quaking fell upon them, so that they fled to hide themselves. Now let's go look at Revelation 1 and see what type of outfit he has on here. Because also now we know in Revelation 1, he back in the Kadesh temple. We, that would be safe for us to surmise, would it not? Revelation 1 and 12. We'll make it 1 and 11. 1 and 9 ain't going to hurt nobody. I, Yachana, who, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation. In the kingdom of, and patience of Yahushua HaMashiach was in the aisle called Patmos for the word of Elohim and for the testimony of Yahushua HaMashiach. I was in the Ruach on Yahuwah's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying, I'm the Aleph and Top, the first and the last. And what thou see, write in the book and send it unto the seven houses which are in Asia, under Ephesus, under Smyrna, under Pergamos, under Thyatra, under Sardis, under Philadelphia, and under Laodicea. And I turned to see the voice of that spake with me and being turned I saw seven golden candlesticks where would those seven golden candlesticks be located at according to the law we looked at it too I mean where are they going to be they're going to be in the house they're in the temple so he's getting a vision of Yahusha in the temple he say, in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. And his head and his hairs were white like wool, and as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice is the sound of many waters. So again, John got the same vision that Daniel got. Daniel saw Yahusha as the high priest before he came. John seen Yahusha as the high priest after he came, after he died, and after he rose and went back into the tabernacle to put that garment back on. Nevertheless, so we're establishing what, what we were seeking to establish was Yahusha putting off his high priest garments to come and make an offering of himself. Like Aaron had to come and put off the high priest clothes, come out the Kadesh tabernacle, and then make an offering for his sins. Why is Yahushua making an offering for his sins? Because he what? He became sin. So therefore, he's offering himself versus making an offering. And then we're going to kind of twerk, work it around, and then we're going to slide on out of here. So, uh, where I got to take this to? Hebrews chapter 2. For a quick hit a point, I could have quoted it, but oh well. Two and fourteen. That's all we want is two and fourteen. 
Actually, no, I don't. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had power of death, that is the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. For truly, he took not on him the nature of Malachim, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. So what is this doing? He put a garment, which because he was a Ruach, and he put that off and put on flesh and blood. And because he put on flesh and blood, now he can come, he has to come out of the cottage because he can't wear those, he can't wear the high priest garments out of the cottage place. So he couldn't come as a man with that on. He had to put that off. And what does that tell us about is how Elohim put off his nature to become a man to pick it back up again to show us that we need to put off the nature of a man to put on Elohim, which is going to take us about how Every time you read about the Kassid in Revelation or any time, what type of outfit they got on? What your garment? And what that garment always made out of? Linen. Linen. You notice that every priest, why is that important? Because he said by the blood of Mashiach, you made what? Kings and priests. So remember, there's no bond, nor free, nor male or female in Mashiach. So because you're joined to his body and he's the high priest with this garment on, then it's only right, regardless of your gender, that you have to put on the same garment. It ain't going to be no, this the garment for the ladies, this the garment for the men. Everybody get have to put on this priestly garment. Not that this person is going to execute the office of a priest, but you have to put this on. Why? Because of that breastplate or the protecting or the surrounding of the pair that is joined to life continuing or those who are joined to Mashiach he's going to protect you because you're joined to life that's the reason why he got this on and if you remember that he got the breastplate of judgment on because he's bearing the sins anybody who sins he's carried they're protected from death therefore they got life because they're joined to him remember kid that's the word Koshan you spell it up what it is? Well, they spell it C O C H O S E N. You know what I'm saying? But you were pronounce it Koshan. So you would pronounce it Koshan. K R. Uh, it's spelled C H O C S E N. But it's not, it, it say that, but it's pronounced Koshan. That's how it's pronounced. There's some hard head children right there. So what we got to take us in the direction we want to go. Uh, so we've established how Yahusha did this. So now why is this important again? When we see that he resurrects from the dead, he goes what? He goes back into the Kadesh Tabernacle. Hey, so that so that goes back to that Hebrews seven that we that we read about how he met stands to make intercession daily for those who come to Elohim by him. Correct. So why is that important on the back end? Hebrews chapter nine, not even Hebrews chapter nine. Let's go to Deuteronomy 33 and 1. And after Deuteronomy 33 and 1, Genesis 49, from Genesis 49 to Isaiah 63. And from Isaiah 63 to Revelation 19, because we're going to wrap this up, right? So we've established that he, he was on high as a high priest, right? He put that garment off to make a sacrifice for the people. But when he went back on high, what did he have to do? He had to put that same breastplate back on. But when he returns, he's got to take it off again. And that's what we're going to look at. Why does he have to take it off? One, we already know he's coming out to cut that place. But why does he have to take it off? Because now he must execute the Koshin of Mishpat. Because it's the breastplate of judgment, right? So now he has to protect those who are joined to life who have destroyed the commands or works of sin and he has to execute judgment on their behalf upon their return so therefore high priest ain't finna come out and fight with no high priestly garment on he gotta take that off that's what the ephod is for, that's what the ephod is for. anything that's a priestly garment he gotta take that off 
He got to take that off. He going to put his warrior clothes on. He going to put his warrior clothes on. He got to take that off. What I just mentioned? I know I got Genesis 49. Yeah, Deuteronomy 33. Go sit down. Don't you come over here with that. And you know better. Mm-hmm. It's going to be hay on your butt. It said, this is the Baruch in where Moses, the man of Elohim, Baruch, the children of Yasharal before his death. He said, Yahuwah come from Sinai, and he rose up from Seir unto them. He shined forth from Mount Paran, and he came with ten thousands of his kesid. From his right hand went a fiery Torah for them. So, let's look at Second Peter. He said, right? He's shining from Mount Seir. He shined from Mount Paran. He got 10,000 Kassid with him. Let's look at 2 Peter chapter 3. From 2 Peter chapter 3, the epistle of Jude. Oh, is that page still there? Is that page still there? That page is still there. 3 and 9. But the master is not slack concerning his promises. Some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us ward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of Yahuwah will come as a thief in the night, in which the Shamahim shall pass away with great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also, and the works therein, shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in all Kadesh behavior and godliness? So why did we read that? Because it said a fiery Torah is coming with him. So he's coming with fiery judgment. What you mean? Said, oh, now that's different. That's that front of, when he said he gonna baptize you with the Ruach Hakadosh. See, that's something a little different. But I know exactly, and I can see why you can put that on there. Cause you can look at that as that's a fiery law too. Just depends on the aspect of how you gonna view it and how you gonna use it. When we look at the Hebrew word for fiery, we get eshdaf. Eshdaf. And that is a fiery law, or a fire of a law, or fire was a law. Say so basically the meaning is uncertain. It is from the root word ash, meaning fire, or Allahim's anger, or supernatural fire. So he's coming back with fire. I'm going to tell you this here because I ain't said it in a while. That verse that Peter just mentioned, that's Isaiah. 51 to be exact. He told you, look at the Shamahim above and the earth beneath. Because he said the Shamahim will roll up like a squirrel, a scroll, and everything in between will get burnt up just like it. Let's look at that matter of fact. Because I ain't read it in a while. Them strong words right there. Them strong words right there. Why niggas around here pussyfooting and playing. That's why he said you better be an all man. He said if you know this is going to happen. Then what type of person ought you to be in set apart conduct and being godly? See, everybody don't think that's gonna happen. That's why people act the way they act. And my apologies. It is Isaiah 51. Where is it at? Because I'm in Isaiah 50. Verse 6, right? He says, Lift up your eyes to Shamahim and look upon their rats beneath. For Shamahim shall vanish away like smoke, and the earth shall wax old like a garment, and they that dwell therein shall die in like manner. But my salvation shall be forever, and my righteousness shall not be abolished. Remember, why is this righteousness and this salvation going to be forever? That was, that was Isaiah 51 and 6. Because he's bearing that breastplate. You got to remember, right? He carrying the children of Yasharal in the Kadesh tabernacle upon his heart. That takes you back to where, where, where the words say that we are a people near and dear to his what? To his heart. He carrying us around in his heart. You know the same way people walk around with lockets with pictures of their kids in it? Or some people, you know what I'm saying? All the stuff that people, it's the same thing with him. Does he need to do that? No. It's a physical representation for us being carnal, dust and ashes people to understand that this man carries us with him wherever he goes. And whatever he does. That's what it's for. He doesn't need no remembrance. You know what I'm saying? But you got to remember. That garment that he's being told to make. Starts in what we started at in Exodus 25. When we were talking about the sanctuary and the light. And all that stuff. And he told him to do what? Make it after the pattern that I showed you in the mount. 
So that means everything that he showed him is everything that was in heaven. So that means the garment that he was telling Aaron to put on was the garment that Yahushua had on before he came and became a man. Which is the garment that he seen Daniel with on. Because since Yahushua was coming to make himself an offering, he had to take that off. But once he resurrected from the dead and now is a priest after the order of Melchizedek again. Because remember that's why we read the Hebrew 7. Because Yahushua didn't have no father and mother when he resurrected from the dead. Just like he didn't have no father and mother when he was in Shamahim. Who was his father and mother? He didn't have no beginning or no ending. See, that's how we tie that in together and then we can see that. Because we neglect that part in, in Exodus 25 when he said, make it to you like I told you in the mouth. And then we just think it's just the tabernacle. When it was everything that he told them to make was the pattern that was in heaven. Everything that he told them to make. Because there was nothing like it in the earth for them to copy it from. So where they get the instruction from? It's, it's what Yahushua was doing on high. All Aaron was doing was walking out what Yahushua had already was coming to do. So he was putting on, that's why he had to take it off. Aaron has no idea what he's acting out. He just know I got to take this off and then make my burnt offering. Yahushua took that off to make his burnt offering, which was himself, through the fire of affliction. Which you could come in there with that fiery law. Alahim's anger. Because in his wrath, he slayed him. Who was he angry with? us nevertheless so let's go to Genesis 49 well I mentioned Jude but you know Jude said that the master the, that, the, that Yahushua would come back with 10,000 thousands of Malachim mm -hmm. so Deuteronomy 33 is opening up with the return of Yahushua that's the first thing he blessed that's what the first thing he blessed them people with is to tell them Yahushua come back to kill everybody who come against you who come against him. That's the first thing he lead with. Which is what we seen he mixed in with Gad. Along with the other point we looked at. Genesis 49. We just going to set back and see how the prophecy stayed. Upon his return. Because remember. Yahushua in Acts 1. He went back on high. So when he went back on high in the Kadesh place. He's in the Kadesh place to do what? To make intercession for the people. Not for himself. That's why we read that. He doesn't have to make offerings daily for himself like other high priests. He did this once when he offered himself. Therefore he doesn't need to take those Kadesh garments and put them off. And come out and let me make an offering for myself. Because I already put them off. And I already offered myself. So now I go back on how I can put this breastplate of judgment on. Because I am forever standing in this set apart tabernacle. Making intercession for you. And for you. And for you. And for you. Because I got all 12 of these tribes across my heart. On this breastplate. Because it's my job to protect them. Because they're joined to me. Because I have destroyed the words and commands of sin. That was in them. Or on them. Genesis 49. We want verse uh, 10. We'll read 8, I guess. Yehuda, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thy enemies, and thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Yehuda is a lion's whelp from the prey. My son, thou art gone up. He stooped down. He couched as a lion, and as an old lion, who shall rouse him up? The scepter shall not depart from Yehuda, nor a law given from between his feet, until Shiloh come. And unto him shall the gathering of the people be, binding his foal into the vine. No, you're not getting up here. And he washed his garments in wine and his clothes in the blood of grace. You think you can come around and put blood on priestly garments? Let's look at Isaiah 63. Why did you do that? Go. Ain't nobody playing with you. Do nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm going to do-do your butt. Season 3 and 1. You know what hard it is? You know that I actually rarely whoop children. If I have to whoop children, that means you deserved it. Or you were whining an, an extremely amount that was highly... Uh, no, nah, because I, I, I've always been like that. Though. I don't feel like there's no need that... If if I have to do that, that means you don't you don't respect me enough. Oh, that's because they hard headed and they stubborn and they try you. They see now they're at that point where they try you. But see, because you're a woman, some try try women a little harder than they'll try a man. Cause you y'all will notice that it's stuff they 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 won't do if a man is there. I don't know why. 
I mean, they may not. I'm just saying, like for the for in general. I don't know why children feel like they can try a woman a little bit more than a man, but I'm just noticing that. That's inside. That's a unscientific. I understand. I mean, it's an unscientific study that I've noticed throughout my lifetime that, you know, niggas feel like, boy or girl, they feel like they can just try mom dudes. You know what I'm saying? And I never understood that because I know, shoot, the black mother's gone for whooping niggas more than the daddy is. Daddy'd be the one usually let these niggas slide. If he did. I think it might have something to do with the bass and the voice or something. I don't know. You don't know when he's playing and when he's not. Yeah, she'll find out one day. Say, who is this that come from Edom with dyed garments from Bones Rock? That is esteemed in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Wherefore are thou red in thine apparel and thy garments like him that tread in the wine fat? I have trodden the wine press alone, and of the people there was none with me. I will tread them in my anger, and trample them in my fury, and the blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I will stain all my raiment. For the day of vengeance is in my heart, for the year of my redeemed is come. Do you see how he say the day of vengeance is in his heart? Because the breastplate of judgment is upon his heart, or the children of Yasharal. Now he say he got to stain his raiment. See what we were going to read in Revelation 19 is the same thing that it said here. That is garment. Everybody know about his garment being stained in blood. But how can he have a garment stained in blood if we already talking about how Hebrew 7 say he in the cottage tabernacle make an intercession for us? Which means he got to have that same outfit on. So what does that mean? He had to take it off. And why was he taking it off? Because Revelation 19. I'll read Re the other end of it. This is why he taking it off. Because he finna come make another sacrifice. So he got to take it off. But this time he ain't making no sacrifice for himself. And then Hebrew chapter 9. Without what you get for being violent. I can't blame him for that because you shouldn't have been hitting along with him. And that's how I know you ain't hurt for real. Revelation chapter 19. 19 and 17. And I saw Malachim standing in the sun and he cried with a loud voice saying to all the fowls that fly to Mr. Shamahim, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great Elohim that you may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of horses, and of them that sit on them, and the flesh of men, both free and bond, both small and great. See, Ezekiel tell you this same thing, but Ezekiel tells you about come to the sacrifice of Elohim. Let's look at that so you can read that verbiage. Ezekiel 39. Actually, is that Ezekiel 39? Ezekiel 38, actually. Stop, Oh, is it Ezekiel 39? Stop. Yeah, yeah, Ezekiel 39, 17. It's referring to Gog and Magog, but we just sit back and we're looking at the verbiage. It said, And thou, son of man, thus saith you, who Elohim, speak unto every feathered fowl and to every beast of the field, and assemble yourselves and come and gather yourselves on every side to my sacrifice, that I do sacrifice for you, even a great sacrifice upon the mountains of Yasharal, that ye may eat flesh and drink blood. You may eat the flesh of the mighty and drink the blood of the princes of the earth and the rams of the lambs of the goats of the bullocks and all them are the foundlings of Bashan. And you shall eat fat till you be full and drink blood till you be drunken of my sacrifice, which I have sacrificed for you. So if we know that if he coming out the tabernacle, then guess what? If Yahushua come to make a sacrifice by coming to kill all these people, then guess what he has to do? He has to take his garment off. He got to take his high priest garment off. And we're in the Hebrew 9 and 25. Some people may see this and some people may not. Do you understand all this, Kira? Yes. Yeah. Is it clear for you? It is. It, um, it kind of reminded me of um, when you did the one with the, when he had to, when he had to put down his Nazarite vow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, all right. um, take it back up again. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Ezekiel, I mean, Hebrews 9 and 23, actually. This is what it say, right? Matter of fact, make it 21. Make it 20. Saying, this is the blood of the testament which Elohim have adjoined unto you. Remember, right? According to the law, the, the covenant was set with blood, right? The covenant is made to do what? To protect you. 
Because if you in covenant, you who will protect you because you joined to him because you're joined to life because he told you I put before you what? Life and death. Therefore, choose what? Life. This is what he's saying the next thing though. Moreover, he sprinkled the blood with blood, both the tabernacles and all the vessels of the ministry. And almost all things are, are, are by the Torah purged with blood, and without shedding of blood is no remission. It was therefore necessary that the pattern of the things in heaven should be purified with these, but heavenly things themselves were better sacrifices than these. Do you see how Hebrews is telling you what we've been talking about? That everything that was shown on earth was the pattern of the things that were in heaven. See, so say for Mashiach. This is what he say for Mashiach is not entered into Kadesh places made with hands, which are the figures of the truth, but into Shamahim itself now to appear in the presence of Elohim for us. Nor yet he should offer himself often as the high priest enter into the Kadesh place every year with blood of others, for then he must often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now once in the end of the world he have appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. So Mashiach was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. And you notice how he sit back and he stated that because he offered the sacrifice. Of, notice he didn't say the sacrifice for himself, but for others. So he put that off to be the burnt offering for us. So when he was coming back the second time, he coming back to dance. And he don't want to talk. But hallelujah for Yahushua. And we will stop it right there, right there, right there.